Grab your copy of God's Word and turn to 1 Samuel chapter 14. 1 Samuel chapter 14. I want to preach to you briefly. I want to preach heart and soul. I want to preach, come on, say heart and soul. Heart and soul. I want to preach heart and soul. There's a guy by the name of Pete Davis, graduated Harvard uh, University several years ago, and in his commencement address, he started talking about an idea, and he labeled his generation, this was a millennial kind of labeling other millennials, and he said that we live in the age, he called it the age of infinite browsing. You can follow along page 17 on your booklet. If you don't have it, you can pull it up front page of the Multiply app. He called it the age of infinite browsing. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but it's Friday night. What do you want to do? Let's watch a movie. What do you want to watch? I don't know. And so you pull up Netflix and you watch a trailer and that trailer leads to another trailer and you watch that trailer and that trailer leads to three more and you're done watching trailers. So you just read the description and 45 minutes later, you have not picked a movie and so you end up watching nothing. Has that ever happened to you? You, sh- you, sh- you shut down, watch this, not because of the lack of choices, but because there are too many choices. And that's what Pete Davis says, is that we live in a, in a culture where we can't commit to anything. Right, People can't commit to a major in college because what if something better comes along? And people can't commit to a job because what if something better comes along? And people can't commit to a marriage because what if something better comes along? And he says, he says, Pete Davis, who's not a believer as far as I know, he says we need a counterculture of commitment. Jordan Peterson says this. He says the reason people are leaving church is because the church has made it too easy. You're not calling people to the sacrifice, to the surrender, and to the commitment that Jesus called people to. Y'all, Jordan Peterson is not a believer yet. But that's somebody from the outside saying to the church, people are leaving the church because you're not calling them to live a life of surrender like Jesus did. Pete Davis said, counterintuitively, the organizations that ask more of their members, the ones that give members big responsibilities, rather than solely serving their desires, are thriving. Kind of sounds like the church of Jesus Christ, where he went up to heaven and entrusted the mission of the world and the salvation of all humanity, yes, through the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, yes, through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, but he entrusted it to who? Not to the profession but to amateurs, to people that were in the marketplace. The church of Jesus Christ is not is going, is going to thrive, not because of a generation of great preachers, but because of a generation of great people that God is even now filling with the power of the Holy Spirit in the marketplace to do great things for Jesus. That's a great place to say amen. 1 Samuel 14, how do we do this? How do we step into this? I love, I love this story. I don't know, this may be a new story to you. I, I, I hope it is in some ways, or I hope maybe you've read it, but, um, but you've not heard, heard it really preached on. I think you're going to find this pretty fascinating. First Samuel chapter 14, the backstory to this is that the people of God, the Israelites, led by the anointed man of God, Saul was their king at the time. They're called to live in anointing, destiny, freedom. They're called to take their land, but they're not. They're living under oppression, a blanket of oppression from the enemy. By the way, let me give you a 10-second commercial. We're going in next week. We are going to begin a series called Freedom from Fear. I believe that the Lord is showing us, I believe the Lord is showing me, this is not, we're living not in personal fear in our days, that our society is under a blanket of corporate fear. And you don't defeat that the same way you defeat individual fear. You defeat that differently. And I believe that the Lord is showing us keys of how we as the people of God can lead the charge in crushing this oppressive blanket of fear that the enemy is trying to put over our society. And so I want to encourage you as evangelists, be sharers, but also be bringers. This will be a great series. You say, man, I know somebody that they're just, they're, they're fearful right now. This will be a great series, this freedom from fear series to bring them to. But the people of God in 1 Samuel chapter 14 are living under this oppressive blanket of less than. 
Does this, does this sound familiar already? So it says this in, in verse 1. One day Jonathan, the son of Saul, said to the young man who carried his armor, Come, let us go over to the Philistine garrison on the other side. But he didn't tell his father. And Saul was staying on the outskirts of Gibeah in the pomegranate cave at Migron. And the people who were with him were about 600 men, including Ahijah, the son of Ahitub, Ichabod's brother, son of Phinehas, son of Eli, priest of the Lord, in Shiloh, wearing an ephod. And the people did not know that Jonathan had gone with him. The passes by, with, by which Jonathan sought out to go over to the Philistine garrison, there was a rocky crag on one side and a rocky crag on the other side. And Jonathan said to the young man who carried his armor, come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised, perhaps the Lord will work for us. For nothing can hinder the Lord from saving by many or by few and his armor bearer. And his armor bearer, not the king, not the commander of the army, not the general. And his armor bearer said to him, do all that is in your heart. Do as you wish. Behold, I am with you, heart and soul. Turn to three people and tell them heart and soul. Come on, say heart and soul, heart and soul, heart and soul. I want to preach how to, how to start a movement, how to start a movement. Number one from this passage of scripture, never underestimate the power of your influence. I can't say that enough. Never underestimate the power of your influence, not the preacher's influence, not the church's influence, but of your influence. You are divinely called by God, put in your context. The odds of you being born in this day, in this era, in this time, in your skin is like over one in 400 trillion. Like it's almost off the charts, but God knew for such a time as this, and you you have a greater influence. So one, of the, one of the tricks of the enemy right now is to get the people of God thinking and putting their eyes off of, oh, I wish somebody else would. I wish somebody else would. No, if God puts it on your heart, it's probably because you have the power. You have more power than you think you do to affect change at a greater scale, at a greater level, at a greater l level of influence in more people than you think you do. Watch this. Saul had a title. Saul had a title. Saul got close enough to watch the activity of the enemy, but not close enough to battle the enemy. You weren't born to complain about your circumstances. You were born to change those circumstances. Ahijah, he had the religious spirit. Did you catch how many titles this guy had? The son of Ahitab, Ichabod's brother, son of Phinehas, son of Eli, the priest of the Lord, and Shiloh wearing an ephod, and he did absolutely nothing. Nothing. Ahijah was the guardian of the status quo, but you are not a guardian of the status quo. Your ears are attuned to the spirit. Your ears are attuned to what the spirit is doing, not yesterday, but today, right now in the name of Jesus. And then there was Jonathan and Jonathan had the faith and the courage to act. You don't need a title to act. You don't need a paycheck to act. You don't need a degree or a position to act. You just need to be filled with the power of God and I love that Jonathan and one armor bearer use their influence how are you going to use in 2021 in your home in your job in your school it, you do have influence that's not the question the question is how are you going to use your influence number two never underestimate the power of a perhaps say perhaps I love this so much. Tell me, tell me the Lord doesn't have a sense of humor. So here's Jonathan. So Jonathan is Saul's son. And there's, there's 600 trained warriors, and Saul's hiding. And Ahijah, the, 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 the preacher, he's, he's hiding. And all these trained warriors, they're hiding. And Jonathan is looking up because they're down below in the valley and there's two rocky crags on the, on the right and on the left. So get this, this image and this picture. And low, low ground is a symbol in, in military strategy that you do not have the upper hand, right? So you want to be on the, on the mountaintop or up on the hillside. You want to be in the fortress. And that's where the Philistines were. And the Philistines are just, are just domineering and they're overlooking and everything like this. And, and Jonathan just, Jonathan says this, Jonathan Jonathan just says, kind of shrugs his shoulders and walks up to the armor bearer and something like, ah, you know, I, hey, 
armor bearer. We don't even know his name, right? Isn't that, isn't that, I think heaven will be filled with people who have done great things that nobody else on earth knew their name, but Jesus knew. I just want to throw that in there. And, and Jonathan looks at his armor bearer and says, hey, hey, um, you and me. We're gonna, all, all those Philistines, the king, he's not in. All these other people, are, they're not in. Just, just us, you, you and me. Let's go. And, uh, and he just looks at the armor bearer and he's like, I don't know, per- perhaps, perhaps God will come through. I don't know. <laughs> I love that so much. If I'm the armor bearer, I'm looking at Jonathan saying something like this. Hey, man of faith and power, could you go back in your prayer closet? Like, could I get, could I get just like a, li- like a little more, ass- a little more assurance that you've heard from the Lord, right? Like, could I get a, could I get a statement of faith and power according to the word of the Lord or, or thus saith the Lord or even just a, like, like I feel in my spirit, right? Like, like so, perhaps, perhaps, but hear me, God will meet you at your perhaps. There are moments in your life when something will rise up within you and you will feel so strongly about something. You're like, this this is it. I'm going to give my life to Jesus. I know. Or or you're standing at an altar and you say, this is who I'm going to marry. I know. I do. I hope that happened for you. But but like like there there are those moments. But sometimes, sometimes in this Christian walk, It's a shrug of the shoulders and your knees are shaking and you're saying, I'm not going to live like this and my family's not going to live like this and my kids are not going to go to a school where they're teaching this, whatever it is, and you just shrug your shoulders and you say, perhaps, perhaps, even if it's just me, even if it's just you, I'm going to go, perhaps, perhaps. And I want to say that for some of you today, you're going to walk up to this altar and you're like, I don't feel qualified. I know I got a bunch of stuff. I don't have it all together, but hey, perhaps I could be a multiplier and you're going to walk out into the ministry fair and you're going to say, I don't know, perhaps I could serve in marriage ministry. Perhaps I can mentor the next generation. Perhaps I could help to run a camera. Perhaps. And God will meet you at the point of your perhaps. Do it unsure. Do it scared. If you wait until you're 100% sure, you'll never do anything great for God. Do it with a perhaps. Say perhaps. Perhaps. And the third thing is this, never underestimate the power of one person. <laughs> I, I, like, like no, no lies, I, as I scan the audience, um, without trying to be all my, too mystical, as I scan the audience, like I, I feel like the Lord's helping me to see power over, over you. Power over, there are some individuals that, You are walking in a divine power right now. And don't underestimate your power when you say heart and soul. Jesus, heart and soul. In these last days, I will rise up. I'll be used as a warrior. I'll climb the rocky crags. I'll take one, one, even if it's one person, even if I'm not 100% sure, heart and soul. And his armor bearer said to him, do all that is in your heart. I am with you, heart and soul. I want you to see three groups of people that begin to rally in this. So so Jonathan and his armor bearer, they're climbing, and they're armed with a they're armed with a perhaps and one overzealous kid. That's what they're armed with. I got a I got an on fire for Jesus southeastern student and a leader who is kind of short. And and they're they're climbing this. They're climbing this. Thomas, don't you love those, those kids? Like, they'll do any sixth graders, like every sixth grader, right? You give an altar call for, you know, you ate too much peanut butter last week, and they're at the altar. Like, they'll take on hell with a squirt gun, right? They'll just, whatever you, what at heart and soul. Love, like, Jesus can do so much with people like that. And so they're climbing, and they're climbing, and they're like, there's probably hundreds if not thousands and there are two of us and they do three things it's not in their it's not in your notes but they do three things they declare they step 
and they strike. They declare, they step, and they strike. That's a good battle plan. If you don't know what to do, if you're shrugging your shoulders and you're like, perhaps declare and step and, and strike, declare the word of the Lord. This is what God says. Just start to read the, read the word and declare the word and step forward. Take a step. Even if you're unsure, take a step into ministry. Take a step filling out that card. Take a step towards being a multiplier. Take one step and then strike. Even if it's just one swing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tithe. Perhaps God will come through and you strike. I'm going to share Jesus. I'm going to take a risk and share Jesus with one person and it's one strike. Not a literal strike you understand your strike isn't to the other person it's to the enemy just so we're clear but you're declaring and you're stepping and you're striking and then there's three groups of people that I believe are going to begin to rally and it's the people that began to rally here number one was the people who weren't sure the people who weren't sure sure so in verse 20 it says then Saul and all the people who were with him they started they started to rally They started to rally. Sometimes all it takes is one person living on fire for Jesus. Watch this. Fear is contagious, but so is faith. Courage is contagious. Faith is contagious. And there is a courage that is going deeper than some of the surface things. There is an inner courage that you walk with, that will begin to be contagious. Heart and soul people impart their courage into rooms, into atmospheres, into classrooms, into work environments that you're just walking, even though, even though you may be feeling a perhaps, you're imparting courage. Come on, how good is God? How good is God that he will use you even if you're like, Oh, perhaps, but it's not you. It's the Holy Spirit that is within you. Because the Holy Spirit is not a spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. But there is a Holy Spirit that overcomes the spirit of fear that fills you that when you walk, the spirit that is within you is greater than the spirits that are around you. And you begin to shift atmospheres. Then Saul and all the people who were with him, they began to rally into battle. And what's going to happen is other people who are sitting on the sidelines unsure are going to see you stepping into ministry and I see a rally coming. I see a rally. Sometimes in a stadium, it just takes one person to start the wave. Sometimes it takes a while, doesn't it? You ever watch somebody try to start a wave at a stadium? Like for five times, they're like, (laughs) everybody's in their seats like we're down by 13 runs and it's it's the bottom of the eighth inning. But like if they keep at it, right? If they if they keep at it, if they keep at it, if they keep at it, I see a wave coming. If you keep at it, I see a wave coming. Sometimes it takes one person to start that rally. It takes one hit. It takes somebody to get on base. It takes one person to believe somebody's got to start it. Somebody's got to start it. And I believe that it's going to be the people of God filled with the power of God in the place that God has put you. People are going to begin to rally around you in the name of Jesus. People have left you. Now people are going to rally around you but it's going to take a step heart and soul and then and then the second group is the people who had left so in verse 21 it says now the Hebrews who had been with the Philistines what did you catch that it's it's one thing when the enemy is oppressing you to be hiding. So some of the Israelites were hiding. But there was another group of Israelites that came out and they went at, they actually went over into the enemy's camp. And they started, they started fighting for the enemy. Have there been people in your life over the last years used to be worshiping beside you that now aren't serving Jesus? Have there been people that you used to serve in ministry with that aren't serving Jesus anymore? But here's what's going to happen. Watch this. Now the Hebrews who had been with the Philistines, 
who had gone over to the enemy, who were living to, for the enemy, who had given up their divine inheritance and had served the enemy before that time, who had gone up with them into that camp, even they also, even they also turned to be with the Israelites who were with Jonathan and who were with Saul. And we call back the sons and daughters of the house. I call people back around you. They used to be on the prayer wall with you. They used to be at the altar praying with you. They're going to rally because they're going to see you heart and soul. And it begins to rally those that had gone over and they stopped serving Jesus. And then there were people who were hiding in their comfort zone. Likewise, verse 22, when all the men of Israel who had hidden themselves in the hill country of Ephraim heard that the Philistines were fleeing, they too, say they too, they too followed hard after them in battle. You know who, the, who this last group was? It, was? it was the bandwagon fans. That's who it was. It was the people. You'd never seen them in a Tampa Bay Buccaneers jersey in their entire life. And in February last year, they're sporting their, yeah, Bucks, baby, Tampa Bay. It's, it's the people wearing all the, the Dodgers hats right now. That you're like, yeah, I didn't know you were from Los Angeles. It's the, it's the people, let me get a little too close to home. It's the people who have not worn their Braves jersey in the last 10 years that are getting that Chipper Jones jersey out of the, out of the closet and dusting that on. They're like Braves for life, babe. I oh, mean, there's something, there's something about a winner that draws people onto the bandwagon. And you may shrug your shoulders and say they're bandwagon fans, and, and that may be true. But let's change this into the spiritual for a second. I don't care how somebody gets to heaven. I don't care if they just hop on the bandwagon because it seems like, I don't, I don't, I don't care. I like, let's have some bandwagon people too. Let's have, some, let's have a move of God that is so strong. Let's have people that are so excited about Jesus. Let's take personal responsibility and say, I affect the atmosphere that the people that even like, I don't even know why I'm serving in ministry, but they're serving in ministry just alongside of you. And then they're going to start getting saved because there's something happens when one person, when one person says, I'm not going to sit in the stands any longer. Heart and soul. Heart and soul, right? Cabco. Cabarrus County. For, if you don't, by the way, uh, a couple of things. If you say, how did they know my t-shirt size in these boxes? We don't. We guessed. We put it in there. And, um, but but at, the, at the information desk, take out the t-shirt and you can exchange it for any, any t-shirt size. I, I just, with everything that is within me, we need you on the team. God, Jesus, Jesus needs you on the team. And uh, did y'all see the movie Invincible? I think it was 2006, Invincible. The, the storyline was this in 1976. In 1975, the Philadelphia Eagles were horrible. They hired a new coach, Dick Vermeil, And Dick Vermeil just said, open tryouts. Open tryouts. The professionals aren't winning. Let's go to the streets. So he just said, open tryouts. And there was a guy named Vince Papale. And Vince was a substitute school teacher. And his buddies were like, go and try out. And Vince tried out. And go, lo and behold, he made, he made the team. Not only did he make the team, but, but he was kind of an impact player in certain games on special teams. You know, one, the, the first game that, that season uh, uh, caused a fumble and it led to an, uh, led to an Eagles touchdown. But the, the point of all this is it's one thing to be a fan. It's another thing to say, I'm on the team, and I'm going to take a jersey, and I'm going to step into this. In just a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand and just come forward and put your card down somewhere and to take one of these boxes. As you do, this is what I want to encourage you to do. I want to encourage you to say, God, use me. God, multiply me. Multiply me. Because something happens, church. Something happens when there is a group of people 
one armor bearer that says, Jesus, whatever you want to do, I'm in, heart and soul. Concord, Pastor. We're all in, heart and soul. On behalf of SEU Carolina, we are in, heart and soul. On behalf of the next generation, Pastor, we're in, heart and soul. On behalf of the Palillo family, we're in heart and soul. On behalf of the Childers family, we're in heart and soul. On behalf of the Christopher family, we're in heart and soul. On behalf of the Bullock family, we are in heart and soul. On behalf of Concord Academy Daycare, through 12th grade, 900 students, over 100 staff, as always, but even committed more, we are in, all in, heart and soul. Would you stand to your feet? We need you, multipliers. Jesus needs you, multipliers. Would you come? Would you come? Would you just ask him? Say, God, use me. God, use me. Would you just even begin to come now? Step forward. Put your card down. Take a box. Make your way back to your seat. And just say, God, I'm in. Heart and soul. you just put your hand on your heart and to Jesus just say Jesus I'm in I'm in heart and soul heart and soul with heads bowed and eyes closed you can be in for Jesus heart and soul because Jesus was in for you heart and soul and maybe there's somebody today within the sound of my voice that you would say pastor I've never surrendered my heart to Jesus because I didn't know that he could love someone like me I didn't know that he could use someone like me he can and he does he went in for you the cross is Jesus going in for you heart and soul and so with heads bowed and eyes closed if if that's you, if today you want to turn your life over to Jesus, if you want to surrender your life to Jesus, just pray a prayer that says something like this. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I come to you. I believe you died on the cross and rose again. Help me to live wide awake to the love of God and fully alive to my purpose. In Jesus' name and all the multipliers said, amen. Thanks for joining us today. If you decided to follow Jesus, I would love to know. 
If you text ALIVE to 94000, we have some resources we'd love to give you as you begin your journey of following Jesus. And if you haven't already, be sure to download the app. This way we can stay connected with you. You get to see what's going on online and at every one of our locations. It's pretty cool. And as always, thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon.